sovereign. Uh, they've got a two-way street going on. On the one hand, they're very much into promoting up-and-coming up artists, but they're directly into using art with less fortunate children. They really see art as an active way of, of liberating the kids in countries who are oppressed. The Sovereign Art Foundation is known for its high-profile contemporary art prizes and for supporting children in need. Sovereign also runs student prizes to nurture young talent and encourage aspiring artists still at school. I'm Laura Swale and I'm very proud to have been involved with the Sovereign Student Art Prize for Malta and Gozo since it was first established in 2017. I'm an artist myself, a former art teacher and also one of the judges in the competition. I'm at Sovereign's Malta offices to meet a very special young artist whose exceptional artwork earned her the Judges Prize in 2020 and who then went on to win Sovereign's first ever global prize. Our winner has kindly agreed to let us in on some of her creative secrets, so today we're going to find out how it's done. But first, let's hear about the competition from Sovereign itself. Well, the Sovereign Art Prize, the purpose of it is twofold. So firstly, it's to raise awareness for the work of the Sovereign Art Foundation, which raises funds for underprivileged children. But secondly, we want to promote and develop art talent uh, within the school system. So we do that by providing a prize which rewards students for their work. The prizes are very good. So we have two. We have a judge's prize, uh, which is 500 euros for the student. We then have a public vote prize, which is 300 euros for the student. It works through participation with the schools. So we invite the, uh, the students to apply through their schools, uh, through their art teachers. Uh, the school also wins a cash prize. So for the judges prize, for instance, the school will receive a cash prize of 1,500. Uh, for the public vote prize, that's 800 euros. So that then they can use to improve their facilities for art within these classrooms. It means a lot to me. And also with, with the money, I also bought a lot of acrylics, art media, like dry pastels, uh, oil pastels, um, poster paint and it really helped a lot. The beauty is that the winner of the judges prize also gets the opportunity to go on to participate in our global art prize. Uh, now that competes against uh, other student art prizes from London, from Guernsey, Portugal, Singapore, Hong Kong uh, and uh, that gives the opportunity not only for, for global uh, exposure for the, for the artists but also there's another prize involved in that too. So we'd really like students to apply and the reason is because of course as well as the prize that's involved for anyone who is really interested in progressing a career in art particularly this is fantastic exposure. Not only will they get publicity within Malta but also they get the opportunity to get publicity worldwide on an international stage to display their work, their talent uh, and to become well known in it. So, Periscovia, we're here at the Sovereign Art Foundation, the organisation that runs the Sovereign Student Art Prize for Malta and Gozo. Uh, you're a bit of a celebrity around here because not only did you win the competition last year, but you also won the first ever global prize. So that makes you the winner of all of the winners. How did you feel when you heard the news and what does it mean to you? Um, the news came out of the blue and I was very overwhelmed and surprised as I never expected to actually win. And for me personally, winning this competition meant the recognition of my illustrational skills, as this was one of the only art pieces which featured a themed project. You've just finished your A-level in art at the junior college in MCDA. We can see from your A-level portfolio that you really love to tell stories and you do it by inventing characters and creating atmosphere and scenery. 
You're going to produce a painting for us today to show us how you do this. I can see that you've got some preparatory sketches here. What are you going to paint? So for my theme, I chose the native Maltese bird, which is blue rock thrush. And I have a story which tells the marriage proposal between the two birds. They are exchanging gifts, which is the pomegranate flower and the lyra, on which this exact bird was featured in 1991. And it's basically the exchange of promises and the marriage. <laughs> So, two birds getting married. Yes. So, what are you going to do first? I'm first going to do the compositional sketch on a semi-transparent paper, and then I'm going to transfer the sketch onto the final piece. So, tell me why you've chosen this particular subject to paint. For me, the subject has always been dear due to the fact that my sister, older sister, is currently studying to become a zoologist and she is interested in the study of the birds. And so for me, in my mind, it has always been associated with her. So it's an emotional connection. Yes. How nice. Yes. So I can see that you've got your materials laid out and you've got some watercolours here. Is this what you usually use? In my art course at college, I usually use a variation of mediums. I use acrylics, pastels, inks, also watercolors. But in my pastime, I prefer to use watercolors due to the fact that I believe that it creates a very nice atmosphere and it's very transparent as a medium. And I also prefer the pans to tubes due to the fact that I believe that it's much better in a way to control the saturation of color. So what are you gonna do next? So I'm gonna start off by masking the birds in order to preserve them for the future painting. And I'm gonna do very flowy watercolor background of the landscape. So tell us how you first became interested in art and how this evolved into a love of storytelling. I have been interested in art since I was very young and my interest in future illustration was mostly influenced by my parents as they used to read us books uh, at night. And a lot of them featured very classical and famous Ukrainian illustrators, for example, Vladislav Yakov. Basically, his depictions of landscapes, of figures, of different animals, they really influenced me to want to also depict some of the stories which I read, which didn't have illustrations, and basically to show how I view them. These are more recent, but he has also had some of the more classically for children illustrations, and these are more grown up since it's Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet. So you're using a reference photo for the scenery and then you're using your watercolours in uh, special ways with different techniques to reproduce the texture in uh, the background and in the scenery. Can you talk us through how this is done and then maybe also tell us a little bit about how you use different paint effects more generally? In this case I'm using a wet on wet technique in which I first draw the entirety of the landscape in water and I add bits of saturated color so that it flows naturally. And it is so that uh, I create the fading effect and also the effect of just more natural greenery. I also use the tissue to take away some of the pigment in some areas to create the bushy effect. I generally use watercolor with other mediums like rice and salt. Rice, I use it mostly to create a grainy texture. And uh, the salt, I mostly use it to create a more rough texture due to the fact that it resembles stone as it dries. So you've lived here for quite a few years now in Malta, but your family is originally from the Ukraine. How much has your background and your family influenced your interest in art? And is this going to be your career now? 
My family has influenced me a lot and also my background due to the fact that I grew up in forests and just landscapes in general. So the love of nature has been installed in me since a very young age. And my family has just generally been very supportive of me and they basically believe and take everything that I want to do in the future with a lot of care and they support me no matter what. And yes, I do intend to be an illustrator in, in the future. We've moved here about seven years ago due to my father's work. He is a digital artist and he is currently doing a lot of also textures on objects, making them look very realistic and old and worn out. And I know that your mother also is a painter, is that yes, right? Yes, she is. <laughs> and a lot of her work influenced me in a way that I want to become better in order to one day reach her level. So she's inspired you a lot? Yes. So the bird husband and wife are coming along beautifully. How do you create characters that people really connect with? I intend to personify all of the characters that I do. It's not exactly that I make them absolutely humane, but I put them in settings which make them appear as normal human beings. For example, in this case, it's a wedding. In other cases, like my competitional work, it was just enjoying your daily work. And basically, it's just showing people that even animals, even inanimate objects can have a sort of soul and character which shows through the artwork. Do you have any words of advice or words of uh, inspiration for other aspiring artists or art students like yourself? I would say is to trust your gut and imagination since it's the only thing which is going to lead you on in life. But also remember to be careful with your imaginative process and the creative process because it's incredibly important in the creation of a very stable piece because you might have a lot of ideas but you might fail at uh, incorporating them in your artwork and so doing a process of developing ideas, research, testing and experimentation is very important in order to be even satisfied at the end of the project. What would you say to art students out there across Malta and Gozo that are thinking about entering the competition this year? I would say go for it because this is an incredible opportunity not only to show your art to the world but also to basically enter the first type of competition with your peers and see what other people are also capable of, maybe learn from it too. And this competition in general gave me a lot of opportunities. It uh, allowed me to understand that my art can be appreciated by other people and it also financially helped me to buy some of the mediums, for example, which I wasn't allowed or didn't have enough to buy before.
Have you ever wondered how they do it? Behind every great piece of art is a story, a person with experience, skills, and prized creative secrets. We've convinced some of Malta's most prominent contemporary artists to give us an exclusive behind the scenes look at the making of their work and to open up their process as they bring new original art to life. The Open Art Studio series offers a rare glimpse into how art is made and is dedicated to art lovers, artists and aspiring artists alike. The series is brought to you by Allura. Allura works with leading local artists to showcase outstanding art and to show you what goes into making it. For original paintings by some of Malta's most sought after artists, visit the Allura Art Collection at www.alluraart.com.